one thing to realise is that your supervisor is very, very busy and is, will be multitasking. They will have a number of PhD students, they'll be teaching, they'll be writing research grants, they'll be running around a lot. Um, as a PhD student, you do have actually quite a lot of time to think and, and write. And those times that you get with your PhD supervisor, I think it's probably worth realising that they may not be completely on the ball with everything that you're doing, or maybe even have a total um, recollection of everything you spoke about in their last meeting. Mm -hmm. So make those meetings count, I think. Have a clear idea of what you want to get out of that meeting with your supervisor and, um, and make it easy as possible for them. So what would be, given that they're not on top of the whole picture and the details, what do they add then to the... Well, I think what the, what the supervisor will add is, um, once you've got them up to speed, is um, you know, they ha they, what they have that, that you don't have as a PhD student is that they have many, many more years of experience, having seen lots of things before, um, probably knowing the literature a lot better than, th than you, having been to lots more conferences and know the individuals who've written some of the papers and therefore be able to assess um, how likely they are to be correct or where they're coming from or what their hidden agendas are. And all of this kind of information you can get from, from, the, uh, from the supervisor. I mean, again, it probably depends a little bit at what stage of your PhD you are. I think if you're in the early years of your PhD, then you really will rely on your supervisor a lot. Probably by the end of the, the PhD, you'll really be um, the one you know, driving the project and moving things forward.